Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part three for this news report today. I'm going to continue here with some different types of news. College Park man fights to keep vegetable garden in the front yard, so this happens again. Orlando says garden against city code. So it's all in the name of city code, right? An Orlando man is fighting city officials to keep his vegetable garden in his front yard. You have to step over radishes, wax beans, and blah, blah, blah to get to the front door. Oh, oh, man. Oh, man. That sucks, right? That's a, that's a big, pretty big deal. It's his land, right? Well, no, actually, it's not his land. He doesn't actually own the land. He just rents it. That's why they call it real estate, royal estate, right? Renting it from the king. It's the king's land. So I guess he said, you'll take my house before you take my vegetable garden. He said, there's nothing wrong here. There's nothing poisonous here. This is a sustainable plot of land. City code requires ground covers to be planted in a way that gives off a finished appearance so that neighborhood lawns are clean, inviting, and keeping proper values up. So, <laughs> that's so funny, dude. In this economy, they'd rather have people starve, just like in New York in New Jersey, they'd rather have them starve, turn away volunteers, uh, not use certain types of heaters, even though FEMA's running out of them, and stuff like that. Uh, they'd rather lock up, like in Europe, they'd rather lock up garbage cans so that people couldn't go dumpster diving and starve, because it's code, because it's not uh, clean and inviting, and doesn't keep property values up. He's decided not to listen, so good news here. Instead, he's trying to petition the code to allow for veggie gardens in the front yard. Again, see, this is what I'm saying. When you deal with governments, this is what you're going to have to deal with. You're going to have to deal with constantly fighting these millions of codes and ask permission. Ask permission to put plants in your yard so you can eat. He gathered more than 200 signatures, including one from his neighbor, Shelly Snow. I'm definitely not bothered by it. As a matter of fact, we love it. He says, this is another example of the government telling us what we can do with our own property uh, that should never happen. In any economic downturn in the past history in the U.S., the government has always encouraged the people to grow their own food, and so we want to continue with that movement. Then we have uh, mom gets big fine after a toddler pees in yard. I, I couldn't believe this. He's three years old as she protests. An Oklahoma woman got a $2,500 ticket, $2,500 for public urination Sunday on behalf of of her not yet potty trained son. Remember, I just talked about this about in New Jersey too, uh, post hurricane where people are taking dumps in their apartments. And I said, you know, oh well, yeah, because they go outside in the midst of all this chaos as the government was supposed to be there for you, which they never will do. Uh, they're there to collect revenue. That's what they are. I mean, I just wish that most people would see it like that. They, you know, they're revenue collectors. They're political law enforcement. They, it, there's no logic or rationale in what they do. They collect money. You know, a police officer happened to be sitting in his cruiser near Ashley Warden's home when her toddler's son pulled down his pants and peed in the front yard. The officer immediately got out and wrote the ticket. We were like, he's three years old. And the warden said, uh, he said it didn't matter. Sweden may ban images of babies in ads for formula. The health officials want to promote breastfeeding. So pretty interesting. The sellers of infant formula in Sweden will likely face a tough marketing problem. They won't be able to use the images of babies on their products as a new law being readied for next year would make the practice illegal. The local health officials want to encourage breastfeeding over formula, and they think mes uh, images of cute babies idealize uh, the use of powder mix, you know, which has melon. Then next up, the FDA doesn't even test the safety of genetically engineered foods. GMO food producers voluntarily consent, but there is no real safety testing, and many people assume that the FDA tests genetically engineered foods for safety, but USA Today reports that um, they say no. Instead, there's a voluntary consultation process. Genetically engineered foods are overseen by FDA, but there is no approval process. They are approved safe unless the FDA has evidence on the contrary, but they'll attack everything else. That's the irony. Anything that's healthy for you, they'll, uh, the FDA and the government will get in between uh, you and that healthy product, and anything that is um, anything that is bad for you, it'll be right out there in the open. I mean, you just think about it. I mean, McDonald's, they're just finally starting to, they're starting to lose profits for the first time in a long time because people caught on with the pink slime. Now, of course, the news is getting sued by that crappy-ass company. And McDonald's, you know, why don't they come out and talk about it? Why don't they just tell people what's in their food? Um, Pizza Hut, you know, they have 
uh, like their cheese is now made out of some kind of synthetic plastic. Um, you have Arby's, they call it GMF, uh, good mood food, it's genetically modified food. Uh, Burger King, you know, they're notorious for having uh, needles in there. So, you know, the best thing is, is if these companies aren't going to be honest, as more and more people are becoming aware of their food as a weapon of eugenics, population uh, control measures, um, you know, just stop buying the product. Just say, screw you, you know, if you're not going to tell us what's in your damn product, then we're not going to even consider buying it. Hopefully, eventually, they just go out of business. New York's emergency, basically, FEMA director fired for sending crews to his own house during Superstorm Sandy to remove a downed tree. Says, I've got people sitting in their homes with two inches of snow outside. They have no electricity, no hot water. They're sitting in their homes and freezing to death. But this guy's only worried about his own home. It's pretty sad, so he was dismissed. Remember, I covered this. FEMA center closed due to weather. So they were all touting in the mainstream media about how FEMA's going to be there for this nor'easter coming. Well, actually, they're going to be shut down ahead of the storm due to bad weather. Uh, FEMA tapped private vendors to meet Sandy victims' uh, needs. So, in fact, the agency appeared to have been completely unprepared to distribute bottled water in the wake of the Hurricane Sandy, despite several days' advance warning of the impending storm. So, you know, just take care of yourself. That's the point. 82-year-old 82, 82 man, oh God, that come up again. 82-year-old man killed by guard vehicle in New York. And Queens man has been struck and killed by a National Guardsman driving in a convoy of about six vehicles. Convoy of six vehicles. Girls of 13 given birth control jab at school without parents' knowledge. Schoolgirls as young as 13 are being given contraceptive injections and implants during lunch breaks with their, without their parents' knowledge. So... School nurses have given implants or jabs to girls between the ages of 13 and 16 more than 900 times in the past two years. It goes on, it says that a further 7,400 of the same age group um, have been given contraceptive injectives or implants at family planning clinics. And the uh, UN is trying to push the rights for child or children. Uh, and it, you know, there's many, many bad things about that. Uh, but uh, of course, the main thing that they really want is. Um, is they want to try to curb or stem the blowback, the side effects of the engineering or population control measures. I'm talking about family. We're talking about uh, promiscuous relationships, which is promoted by the elites. They want to kill, they want to uh, deconstruct society so that we're all fending for ourselves. In order to do that, you have to kill the family. In order to kill the family, you don't want people in any serious relationships that have bonds and stuff like that. So, um, so they just started handing out condoms. Well, when it doesn't work out, they want to promote uh, them being able to have abortions. You know, even at like five or six years old, I, you know, I don't even know if they could have kids then, but you know what I'm saying. It's uh, at any age, they can have abortions and they can get all this stuff done. Oh, you know, because they're individuals. See, they care about freedom, though. They care about eugenics. They despise humanity. A dog would have been treated better. Daughter's heartbreak over father's death after he's put on the death pathway without family's permission. So I only covered this because um, because of this, because they're, uh, you know, giving birth control jabs at school on their lunch breaks without the parents' knowledge. And they're killing people, putting on the death pathway, NHS that is, without their family's permission. So then we have a cancer expert brands the death care pathway the most corrupt practice in British medicine. He says, I wouldn't be treated in a hospital here. Um, and he goes on and says, senior oncologist accuses NHS managers to use the liver coal care, uh, care pathway, it's death pathway, in order to clear beds and reach their targets. So it may bring in more money for their hospitals. In fact, the guy actually said, I would, uh, he's personally never been treated in a hospital in England. And he's going to, he says here also at the bottom here, get to it, I would go to America because I wouldn't trust anybody because I don't trust anybody here in England. But here in the uh, United States, they're going to actually start forcing people at gunpoint to take on private uh, health insurance. So, pretty bad deal. We have Welsh Jews protesting potential organ donation law. The Welsh government is proposing a new law that will make everyone an automatic organ donor unless they officially opt out. So, they have to, all they have to do is opt out. But they're making a big stink about it, saying religious groups in the country, including Jews, are voicing their objections. We believe that people should be able, to, or the family or the deceased should be able to agree to organs being taken as a gift donation. I would have preferred there not have been a bill. This one commenter said, why are there so many people today having major body organs malfunctioning and shutting down? What's causing this? 
Well, I'll tell you what it is. It's the genetically modified food that they don't want to label. It's the fluoride in your water. It's the chemicals that they're spraying, the aerosols in the sky. They're poisoning your air, your food, your water. Um, they're releasing radiation, um, you know, with the, the Fukushima thing. Of course, they're, they're bombarding you with ELFs and microwaves. Uh, and this is why I said, I mentioned this before, about um, there's a concept for a script in that that I had. Um about organ harvesting, you know, that's going to be a big thing, and people would actually give donations, uh, you know, oh, get a one-time, I mean, I actually wrote the whole script, but it, it, it you know, where people were lining up at the, you know, lining up at these uh, little vending kiosks as the UN was on t television saying, branding this a great thing that this, you know, this law was passed by the United Nations that uh, allows people to, uh, you know, basically take out organs and sell their organs and stuff like that and get uh, receive credits to their family so I mean you could actually kill yourself and get all these organs har harvested and you, your family would get you know credits study recommends financial compensation for organs to boost donor members so a new survey from Alberta Canada researchers is recommending cash incentives for organs to encourage more people to sign donor cards so yeah, um, pretty interesting though. Said uh, a study that found paying donors could increase donation rates. And part of the premise of this story, the big premise of this story that I made up was that the uh, was that of course the elites would be getting these organs from these desperate, desperate people that did have healthy organs, and uh, and all of the plebes and the slaves that were dying, you know, they had bad organs. They would get these kind of exper experimental. Um, frozen organs that, that are, you know, frozen and cryogenics, they, they can actually do that now. And um, that, and of course, bum organs, so they would have a lifespan of only like a year or two, so they'd have to constantly be buying these new organs. Kind of like how debt works as debt slaves. Pretty creepy. State of New Jersey awards Radiant F RFID five-year emergency management solution. This is, I think it's before, I don't know the exact date of the Hurricane Sandy took place, but this was before uh, uh, the, the hurricane. New Jersey awards the RFID chips. So kind of like the uh, Sheikh Hossein was saying, kind of uh, interesting, kind of like 9-11, where he was saying that there was a lot of Jews that uh, got out of town that day. Um, and also he was saying, or uh, theorizing, that ahead of this hurricane that a lot of people took on insurance ahead of the hurricane. Washington County students carry devices to help pit monitor spread of flu. So... So the researchers are going to experiment on these students and distribute these remote sensors to 450 uh, test subjects. They'll, they'll wear them the size of a beeper on, their, on lanyards around their necks. So great, it'll be uh, pulsing them, right? Little frequencies. So it's basically going to signal detect another moat when they get close to another. It will find how children interact. One quarter of EMTs don't get the flu vaccine. So patients are regularly advised to get their dose of eugenics, but a quarter of St. Louis emergency medical technicians do not get vaccinated, right? I covered this before, protecting their own, the unofficial vaccination policy of doctors in the know. That's right, they don't vaccinate their own children. I don't vaccinate my kids, I rely on herd immunity. Now, where what is herd immunity? Well, that's exactly what we were just talking about. It's this, what they're experimenting here with these uh, students, herd immunity. So governments are considering a two-child policy for the West, that's right. As actors and activists in the West speak out against China's one-child policy, politicians move to introduce the same policies in the North. I covered this as well. This is right on the eve of uh, Christian Bale going over there and uh, basically giving a human rights award to the Chinese pro-life activists. So it says here this uh, Duncan Smith, who works in the UK, not only will they uh, propose this limit on families exceeding their allowance of children, they want to do the EU plan, which is uh, basically a way to phase out child benefits for multi-children families, which sounds nice and everything, but the thing is, is those with the finances are the good slaves that uh, work for this global satanic corporation. And if you don't, and you're in lower echelons, like usually tribes and stuff like that, um, they have a lot of kids because that's seen as a, as a good thing. That's why I don't like when people uh, uh, make this into a welfare stuff, into a welfare debate. China considers relaxing one-child policy, so they're doing the opposite over there. The man who sued his wife for birthing an ugly baby, baby in China, of all places. But that makes sense, because biologists are saying hand-picked genes right around the corner. Scientist George Church envisioned a world where traits are predetermined by parents. 
As the U.S. birth rate hits an all-time low, 40% of babies are born to unmarried women. Thank you.